Well, good morning. Um, one of the things that has come up a little bit as we uh, reach out to new people to develop for Android, um, we tend to, to run into a group of folks that are not familiar with Linux. And so what I wanted to do was actually take a break from the norm a little bit and just kind of intersperse these, this little video series in here about how to use Linux for a beginner. And this isn't going to be the all-inclusive how to use Linux and how to do everything with Linux and how uh, great Linux can be. What I want to show is particularly the tools that you're going to end up using um, for building Android, but just some generic things that help you uh, as you try to uh, you know, accomplish this task of building Android if you're not familiar with Linux at all. So. Uh, if that's you, this video is for you. If you're already familiar with Linux, then maybe this video won't be very helpful to you, but uh, hopefully it will help those who are just getting started. So what I have here is uh, Bionic Beaver uh, Ubuntu 18.04. <coughs> um, I highly recommend using Ubuntu to build Android because that's what Google uses to build Android and I think that's a good place to start. Most guides are written for using Ubuntu to build Andrew, uh, Android and so that's a good uh, thing to use if it's your first time. There are people who use Linux Mint and several other variations, Debian and whatnot, and you can definitely branch out to those but I recommend you start here. So we have our, our desktop, our GUI, our graphical user interface. If you need help on how to install Ubuntu, I have several videos on that and uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, but, uh, but so if, you, if you've got to the desktop, you've got it installed, and now you're wondering what do you do with this Linux thing. So a lot of Linux is still heavily based on the command line, although there are a lot of graphical user interface tools to do some things. But I just want to take a minute to look at the graphical user interface, which they call a GUI, right? And um, this, I believe, is the Unity desktop. Uh, you can have tons of different desktops for Linux. Um, one of the great things about Linux is the ability to customize it pretty much any way you want. Um, the machine that I'm running this virtual machine inside of actually utilizes uh, you know um, a different GUI called XFCE um, and then there's a lot of other really popular ones uh, particularly KDE's Plasma and uh, Gnome uh, are some of the big names that you'll see as well as Cinnamon and, and a few others. But so we have this graphical interface and this button down here is uh, the show applications button kind of like the start menu of Windows as it were and typically it won't show everything in in the possible world that you might have installed on the computer but uh, it's just some of the applications that it knows are installed um, of course clicking on anything will open it up like we have Genie here right here that we were using to look at uh, some of the code before um, and just like in you know Windows you can usually resize the window to different sizes. Uh, very basic stuff here that you find in pretty much any graphical user interface operating system. You can close the window, minimize it, um, all those sort of things, just like normal. Nothing too exciting there. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the graphical user interface uh, really you know, is, is a handy tool, but most of the work that you're going to do in Linux, you're going to be doing from the terminal. Uh, but just a few things that are really handy for Android in particular when you're using the graphical user interface, of course, the file manager. Um, you can, uh, you know, open up multiple tabs by middle clicking, or if you only have a two button mouse, you can click both buttons and that will simulate a middle click. Um, you can right click and then just say to open something, that sort of thing. Um, pretty basic, just like you find in, in any other. Um, you know, graphical user interface operating system. Another really great tool is the system monitor. Um, when you open that up, it'll allow you to see how many resources you're using, which is really handy when you're doing Android. You might want to take a look to see if you're maxing out or uh, if you're having some memory problems. This might be a good place to look. But I wanted to open this up so I could also show you. Notice that it gets added to this uh, smart bar over here. 
<clears throat> you can right click on something and say add to favorites and now even if I close it it stays and so that's how you can add new things like just right clicking on the bar doesn't let you add anything um, if you click here and you drag something over there that doesn't add it to the bar what you do is you just open up whatever you want um, we'll say settings and once it opens you can then right click on its icon and say add to favorites and now if you close it it'll stay there forever or you can take it uh, and maneuver it to a different spot say you want it in a different order you can remove from favorites and then it will go away uh, so the graphical user interface is very very straightforward very simple to use much like what you would see uh, in Windows or something similar. Right clicking on the desktop, you know, you can do all the usual things like changing the background, um, you know, aligning or organize your um, items here. One thing that's interesting about Linux compared to Windows is you have multiple desktops, and so um, that can be a little confusing to people at first. Uh, it depends on which desktop system you're using as far as how you switch between them sometimes it's with command keys uh, and sometimes it's uh, with uh, with like a bar with buttons that'll be displayed on one side or the other um, very uh, very handy to have multiple desktops because you could switch between them and have everything open in one desktop switch to another desktop and look at everything um, arranged just the way you like it it's a pretty handy thing to do most of the time in unity uh, people just kinda use the one desktop but uh, but you can have multiples. Um, what else should I show you while we're still here? Of course, you know, web browsing, that sort of thing. <clears throat> they do have, you know, the uh, th these two items that we want to talk about here, as well as the settings. But uh, so you have the Ubuntu software, uh, and this allows you to find pretty much anything you want and download it, um, add it to your machine. Um, a lot of misconception is that you have to install everything from the command line, but you don't. For instance, if you want Android Studio, you can just click on Android Studio and click install. And uh, then it will ask you for your password. And um, Once you enter it, it will start installing and do all the necessary steps to put that on your machine. So that's pretty handy. We're going to minimize that and just kind of let that run in the background for a minute. Uh, and then we have utilities, you know, all your standard utilities. You want to look at your disks, you want to look at, you know, pictures, you want to view documents, that sort of thing. We'll just take a look at disks real quick. Um, this is a VirtualBox machine that I have here. So it's not super huge, but we notice that the size is 322 gigabytes. Uh, and we can see here that it's a little less than half full. So has 195 gigabytes free so it's only 40 percent full and so that's pretty handy especially when you're working on Android and you want to uh, you know want to know how full your drives are most of the work that I do I do from the command line and I know all the commands to look this stuff up but if you're not familiar with that this GUI really does help you out and so it's definitely worth uh, worth having that um, my internet's slow so it's going to take a long time for this to finish installing so we're not going to worry about waiting for that I'm just going to let that install in the background but know that once something installs it should be added to your show applications your smart bar to the menu options uh, another thing here is you can just search for something you can say Firefox and then it will show that Firefox but it also search your hard drive and look at files that you have and it will search the Ubuntu store to look at you know other options of something you might want to install um, which is really really handy so what's great is if you're looking for a file you can just go here and search and it will find the file um, for instance we could say uh, life oops, life XL and it's like oh hey you've been working on the life XL on this machine here we go here's some files there um, you could say well I want uh, Android Studio and um, you know it's going to be searching there for a minute for that and it says oh you want Android Studio yeah you can just click on it here and install it you know and uh, so a lot of really handy things that you can do um, with that as well. Um, 
settings. We should talk about that briefly. So the settings are a little odd here because this is a virtual box as opposed to a regular box where you would have some different um, network settings and stuff like that. Uh, I don't want to dwell on that too much, but you know if you uh, want to change your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, networking settings is definitely the place to go. Um, the dock on the size, you can change the icon size, uh, that sort of thing. Um, you can turn on auto hides, so that way it uh, will go away if a window is in the way. Unlike Windows, it won't just come back when you scroll the mouse over there. You need to move the object that's obstructing it away. Um, so if you go full screen with something, you won't be able to find that dock. So you have to shrink it back down so you can get the dock back. So that's a little different. Um, you can actually change where you want it on the screen. You can put it on the bottom, which is like classic windows. You can put it on the right, obviously on the left where it started. So lots of good stuff there. Um, you know, changing backgrounds and lock screens, that sort of thing. Nothing too exciting, but I just wanted to give you an idea. This is the graphical user interface that you would utilize for um, Linux, especially if you're going to be building Android and you're using Ubuntu, and in this case, um, 18.04, but 14.04, 16.04, the whole Unity desktop works pretty much the same. Uh, and so then the most important tool that you're going to use when building Android is the terminal. So I'm going to make another video talking about terminal commands and the ways that we can uh, you know, utilize Linux uh, from the command line. But uh, I just wanted to show you this is this is how you um, utilize the graphical user interface here. Uh, another quick thing is when you have something like uh, something open, you can right click on it and it may have special options. For instance, for this terminal, you can say new terminal, and now you can have two, or you can have three, or however many you want. So it does help if you have multiples open. If you click on it, then you can click on which one that it was you were looking for, which is pretty handy. Um, looks like I've had a little error pop up here. Problem with Nautilus, that's fine. Um, but anyways, so I uh, just wanted you to be aware of that and how we can utilize that. And hopefully this video was helpful for those that are just beginning with Linux and they're like, what in the world did I get myself into? Here's here's just a basic overview of the graphical user interface. So hopefully uh, in the next video we'll be taking a look at how we can utilize uh, the command line in Linux.